ladies and ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. David Beckham. Nice to see you, sir. How are you? Wave. Hi. Morning. Have a seat. Have a seat. Welcome. Welcome to Google. Um, so let's uh, let's kick off. No pun intended. With a little with a little <laughs> soccer, or for our international friends, football. You know, you, David, you really have had a global soccer career. I mean, you joined Manchester United at the young age of 17. You won nine major trophies in 11 years there. Very impressive. You then joined Real Madrid, where you won another trophy. And then since 2007, you've been here in the US playing for the LA Galaxy, where last year you won yet another trophy. And I think that puts you in a very rare group of trifecta winners of three trophies on three different countries. So congratulations. Thank you very much. And, and then obviously, while, while preparing to meet you last night, I, heard, I read even more news last night, the big news, <laughs> that you decided to stay here in the US and continue to play for the US, the, the LA Galaxy. Congratulations, and I think we are excited that you chose Google as a place to come talk to your fans and the rest of the world about that news. So why don't we start there? Why don't you tell us a little bit about that decision to stay with the Galaxy? Um, well, good morning, first of all. <laughs> um, I'm excited to be here. To be part of this is, is exciting for me, and um, to be here with, with you all and uh, everyone else watching around the world, it's, uh, it's exciting. Google's one of the biggest uh, companies in the world, so um, I'm honoured to be here today. Um, my decision, obviously, throughout my career has always been about my family, about you know my, my career, about my, my football, footballing career. Um, and I've been lucky to have played over the years with some of the biggest clubs in the world, some of the best players in the world. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been exciting. I've been lucky enough to have been successful in, in many different clubs uh, that I've played for. Um, and professionally, coming to the US was, was something that I was excited about. It was a challenge. It was a new challenge. I've, I've played in Europe. I'd won everything that I possibly could in Europe. Um, and I wanted a new <laughs> challenge, so... Um, you know, when you conquer Europe, it's definitely the next... Like I said, I was, like I said I was, I'm very lucky in my you career. So, um, so then, obviously, coming to America was an exciting thing for me. Um, and I've had a great five years. Uh, met a lot of good people, a lot of great fans around the world. Travelled around America, played in different parts of America, which I'd never played in before. Uh, and it's been exciting, so... Um, you know, this championship uh, at the end of this year was one of the most satisfying in my career, I must admit. You know, to, to, to have been here for the time that I'd been here, to reach the goals that I'd reached off the field um, with raising, you know, the popularity of the game, um, I'd reached those goals. The only goal that I hadn't reached was a championship with the Galaxy, which is, an, <laughs> is the main reason why I came to... America and, and came to uh, the Galaxy as a franchise, so that was missing, but now it's not. So Congratulations. Um, but obviously with the new contract now, um, it was a decision that I, I didn't take lightly because, you know, I I'd obviously had other offers uh, from uh, other clubs around the world and um, at 36 years old you don't expect to still get these offers, so <laughs> um, that was nice, but, uh, you know, it was all about you know, where I felt the future was going for the game here in, in the US and also um, where my family was happiest. And my family are happiest here at the moment. Um, we love living in LA, we love living in America. Um, we've adapted the culture, we've adapted everything that, that, that this country uh, has. Um, and we enjoy that. So I'm going to continue to enjoy playing soccer here. Um, and my family will continue to enjoy it. Well, speaking of kind of away from the galaxy, I saw when you came in 2007, you made a very public statement that you wanted to help grow the game of soccer in the U.S. Can you talk a little bit about how that's going in some areas around growing the game here? Well, that's the thing, you know, it's one of the reasons why I came to this country uh, is because for me, soccer is the number one sport around the world, apart from America. Um, there's, don't, get, don't get me wrong, the other sports, American football, basketball, baseball, they're all great sports and, and have great athletes in these sports, but, you know, number one game in the world is soccer. Um, so I, I want to get soccer to a different level in this country, and I think that we've done that in the last, 
I've felt it change in the last couple of years, and that's why I didn't want to walk away from it, mm. because I've felt the change, and to walk away at this point would be, um, would be disappointing, because I've been part of that growth, um, and I want to continue to be part of that growth. So, um, you know, it's, it's an exciting time, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's great for the family as well, you know, great for the family to be here. Well, speaking of the family, I think we've all read how important family is to you. So, you know, what role did Victoria and the kids have in the decision, in making this decision? I mean, they have, they have the final answer, as simple as that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounded wrong, but, uh, <laughs> but no, obviously, you know, when, you, when you're married, when you have children, you know, your priorities totally change. Um, you know, ten years ago when I was playing at Manchester United at Real Madrid, you know, obviously um, we were married, but it was, it was a lot easier for us to make decisions based on uh, our careers, whereas we've got three amazing boys now, and and a little girl that we have to look after, and um, yeah. it's all about them. So our, our priorities are about our children. But uh, you know, like I said in, in the question before, the growth of the game is growing. Um, and you know, to see when I first arrived, there'd be 12, 12 teams in, in the league. Uh, now there's 19. Um, there's stadiums being built around America solely for soccer, which is a, which is a big thing, New, yeah. you know, and uh, that's, that's the exciting part of why and one of the reasons why I wanted to stay. Yeah, well, I think the impact of your presence on the game has been very clear over the last five years. Um, I think one of the other questions that I'm sure are on a lot of people's mind, you know, with this decision is, you know, really, why, why come to Google to tell the world and talk to your fans? Why not? <laughs> Why? Why not? So simple. Like I said, it's, it's one of the biggest companies in the world um, and it reaches so many millions of, of people and, and I, th I felt that, you know, it's, it's something that you always see when you open your computer. We like that. <laughs> and, and, and something that I was really excited about. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm honoured to be here with everyone and thanks for coming out because uh, there's, there's a lot of you. Thank you. So, so in getting ready for this visit, we saw that you posted a, a video call out for questions on YouTube, which was fantastic. And I'd say from that video, we've collected tons of questions, we've gone through them, we've curated them, and obviously we'll go through some of those today. I think just also so you know, your, your Google following is also very strong. Obviously, you can see the people here in Charlie's, but in addition to this group, there are about 26 other offices from around the world kind of dialed in to watch this and ask you questions as well. And I think if it weren't so late in some of the other parts <laughs> of the world, we'd have even more than that. So congratulations on building a following here at Thank Google you. as well. Thank you. Um, so let's dig into some of the questions right away. You know, we'll start with football. Uh, Tao Mu Yi from California wants to know, what is the biggest difference between playing football in America versus Europe? I mean, there's not a huge amount of difference. Uh, one of the biggest difference, I'd say, is just the travel. It's literally the travel. You know, in, in Europe, we only have to travel about an hour to, to a game or two hours at the most. Um, whereas when we play East Coast, we're playing, you know, in New York, it's a five, five and a half hour journey. So that's a, that's a big difference. But on the field, you know, the level of play has definitely gone up in the last three or four years. And I think that uh, it's at a stage now where you know, this game is starting to attract um, the interest of some big names and big players in, um, in Europe. And I think, you know, th there has to be a certain change with, you know, uh, some of the things that goes on throughout the league. But I think, you know, it's a league now where, you know, European teams, big European teams are coming over for their pre-seasons mm -hmm. and they're playing against us. So, you know, five years ago, you know, uh, kind of the galaxy had been heard of, but I think now with the interest of the players that have come over, such as Robbie Keane and obviously London Donovan mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, you know, as a US star, right. um, you know, we've had that, that, that interest and it's, uh, it's exciting to be part of. Yeah, I think it must be great to see the growth, you know, see the change year over year in, in the speed and the power of the I player. think that's what you always want, you know, you want to see something grow, you know, if you sit still so long, you know this better than anyone with, with Google, you know, if you sit there too long then, you know, things change around you. Um, and to see the growth, to see the change, you know, I'm, uh, I'm proud to, to be part of that. That's great. Uh, another question, Mahin Zara asks, 
What is the first thing you do think or notice when you step onto the field initially? Um, I think just the excitement. I'm still, you know, I'm 36 years old and every time I step on the field, I'm, I'm, I'm like a little kid. Um, and I know once that changes, then um, that's when I'll feel I'll, I'll have to stop playing. But uh, until that changes, I'm going to continue to play as, as long as possible and as long as, you know, teams keep offering me new contracts. <laughs> But it seems like that love of the game, that childhood joy of just playing the game is what drives you. I've always been driven, you know, even at a young age. All I ever wanted to do was become a, a footballer, a soccer star. Um, and that was my only ambition, you know. I know it's different these days with kids, you know, there's obviously this fame, this fortune. And it might be easy for me to say that because obviously I've done, I've done very well out of the game. But, you know... I'd still be playing this game even if I wasn't being paid for it. Mm -hmm. Not well, that, not that I don't want to be paid for it, <laughs> but, but I, um, I still would be playing, for, play, playing this, this sport. Very good, very good. Um, another question, Christina Gr Greenwood asks, do you ever listen to music before a soccer game to kind of get yourself pumped up? Always. Always? always. Spice Girls? Spice Girls, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wannabe always gets me going before I go. Everybody, I think who doesn't? Always. Um, so yeah, so no, Spice Girls is not on the playlist. It's on my iPod, but it's not on the playlist. Um, that's, for, that's for a different time with the kids. But uh, no, I, I always listen to music. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge Jay-Z fan. Excellent. Um, huge uh, Stone Roses fan as well, um, who are getting back together in, in June. Um, just plugging them um, and um, no yeah you know at different clubs it's strange before games uh, we always listen to music but there's certain managers at certain clubs that don't like music before mm. before a game in in the change room which you know in the end most players end up listening yeah you know with their, with their, their headsets headphones. yeah that's good um, Minko wants you to, to give up the secret you know how do you train for the perfect Beckham kick and we've seen it you know, how, how does it happen? I mean, it's it just, people have asked me that over the years, you know, how do I curl the ball, or how do I bend the ball, and you know, it's something that just happened. It's not something that um, I thought, okay, I want to bend the ball better than anyone else, so I'm going to kick the ball in this certain way. Um, I just worked on my striking of the ball. I just practiced every day. It's something that I've done from a very young age, um, you know, even after every training session. You know, I'd take balls on, on my own and, and just curl and kick and, uh, and, and try and find new ways of, of getting the ball in the net without anyone touching it. And, uh, you know, I've been, I've been lucky enough to have done that over the years with, uh, with the way I kick the ball. And I know that it's a unique style and I know, um, I know it's a unique style just because my back hurts a little <laughs> bit more than, than it did when I was uh, 15 years old. But... Um, no, you know, it's something that I practice, of course, you know, it's one thing I tell kids, you know, and, and le unless you practice, you're never going to, um, you know, yeah. get better at something. Well, I think there's not a goalkeeper in the world who is not terrified when you line up for that free kick. So <laughs> whatever you're doing, keep doing it. That's right. Um, and so we have a couple questions, you know, uh, live from London, actually, from our office in London, which we wanted to have that, your homeland people Good ask evening. you. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead? Hi, David. How you doing? My question is, um, who is more likely to win a World Cup in the future, England or the USA? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's a terrible question to ask me while I'm sat here. Um, I'm going to have to say England. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I've got a lot of respect for you know the US players and the US team and they've got some very talented players but uh, I believe at some point England are going to win a World Cup because <laughs> we have got a lot of talented players in our country and uh, we're very passionate and it's where the game began in you know so for me um, definitely I, I think England are going to win a World Cup at some point. America's just pacing themselves. The US a few years behind <laughs> us but a few years after. Exactly. JT? Or, hey sorry. David, this is uh, JT over in London. Morning. How's it going? Afternoon, evening. Morning. Right, yeah, evening kind of here. 
Um, so I've seen you play a couple of times. Uh, one of them was a Tsunami charity a game you played in Barcelona with uh, loads of superstars. And I just wanted to know who was the greatest player you played with or against? Okay. Um, again, I've been lucky enough over the years to have played with uh, some of the best players in the world. Obviously, being at Manchester United, being at Real Madrid, being at AC Milan. Uh, you know, these are three of the biggest clubs in, in the world. Um, so, obviously, there's some great players there. Being able to play with Eric Cantona, I think that was, that was a great thing as a Manchester United player. Being able to play with a player um, that is that Brian Robson, that was my hero and I wanted to emulate. Um, but I think the best player I've ever played with is, Zid is Zidane. Uh, he's a player with a lot of passion. Um, <laughs> A, a lot of skill, and uh, he's not just a, an amazing player, he's, um, he's a great person as well. Um, the, the, the player, the hardest player to have played against was Roberto Carlos, who's, who's now actually one of my best friends. Um, but uh, even when I didn't know him as well as I do now, he used to kick the hell out of me uh, <laughs> the whole game, but he had this cheeky smile, um, <laughs> which you, know, you couldn't hate him in, in any way possible. Um, but he's definitely the most, uh, the toughest player I've played against. Very good. Colin? Hey, David. So my question is, if LA Galaxy were to play in the English Premier League, how would they stack up against the competition? Um, we'd win it. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, no, I think, you know, the, the Galaxy have been great in the last two years. We've been really successful. We've uh, obviously been um, close to winning the championship over the, year, over the last few years, but then uh, obviously this year winning the championship. We've got a lot of good young players coming through, players that, you know, teams in, in Europe are interested uh, in. So um, I think we'd, we'd do well in the Premiership. It'd be interesting. I think you never know. I mean, that's the beauty of the game. I mean, I think, you know, you work hard, train hard. I, I mean, that's what soccer's all about. You know, it's all about upsets. It's all about, you know, uh, you know, teams that you don't think are as good as other teams going in and beating them. You know, that's what the FA Cup is all about in, in England. You know, lower league teams go in and they beat some of the you know, the, yeah. the best premiership teams uh, in England. So um, it's what it's all about. But I think, I think we'd do well over there. That's good. Maybe one day. It might be a bit cold <laughs> for a few players in, in December, but uh, we'd oh, do well. That's great. Uh, JT mentioned the charity game that you played, and I think, you know, we've seen you do a lot of philanthropic work throughout your career. I think we touched on it, you know, the UNICEF work and the highlight video. And recently we saw that you were in Afghanistan visiting some troops there. Can you tell us a little bit about what that trip was and what you did there? I mean, I know it sounds kind of a cliche, but charity is one of my biggest passions. Mm -hmm. um, I've been lucky enough to be involved with UNICEF as, a, as an ambassador, and that's something that I'm very proud of. Um, but I want to do more. You know, I, uh, obviously, with, with my job, with you know, my travel, it's very difficult to go into the field and to do different things. But I've been able to go to places like Sierra Leone, um, you know, and, and going places like that and seeing the change that UNICEF are making to so many people around the world, that's one of my biggest passions. That's why when people say to me after my career, um, am I going to go into coaching? I need to be passionate about something that I'm going to go into. Um, and coaching, I love coaching kids, but I'd prefer to, to, to go into the field and, and see the kids, you know, in Sierra Leone or in in different parts of Africa and uh, around the world and, and coach them because mm. it's, it's making a huge difference. Uh, going to Afghanistan was something that I'd always wanted to do, mm. um, to see the troops, of course, you know, and uh, when I got, when I ruptured my Achilles two years ago, uh, I had some time off, obviously, and, and I thought, okay, I need to put that to, to, to you know, to do something good. And um, I had the chance to go to Afghanistan um, it was a secret at the time, but then obviously by the time I got there, it was, it was out. Um, but, um, you know, it was a huge thing, you know, to uh, some of the, 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 the job that the troops do uh, over, over there in Afghanistan is really incredible to see the conditions that they work under and, mm -hmm. and you know, they're putting their lives at risk every single day. Uh, and it must be 
gut wrenching for their families to see their loved ones, you know, <laughs> brothers, sisters, sons, daughters. You know, it's you know, there's so many different levels that it's difficult. And uh, to go to Afghanistan was a, one of the best things that I've done in my life. Yeah. Well, I think it must be. I mean, with your work with UNICEF since 2005, I mean, it must be amazing to see. You know, you as an international football star, how the game can bring such you know, joy or change people's lives and just these kids all around the world. I mean, that's what's great about, about soccer. You know, I've, I've said it so many times that when I, was, when I was in Sierra Leone, you know, these kids are walking about with literally no clothes on. But you arrive, you put a soccer ball in front of them, they play like my kids play. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's what soccer can do for you uh, and, and do for kids and do for families. You know, for that 90 minutes, you know, you're driving along the street and, you know, like I said, there's kids with no clothes on uh, and running around with no shoes on. Um, and then you look over and then, you know, kids are watching premiership games in a, in, on the side of the street. You know, it can change people's lives. It can... You know, for that 90 minutes of a game, it takes them away from the life they've got every single day. Um, and that, that is the power of soccer, it's the power of sports. It's, it's, it's something that, one of the reasons why I love being involved in uh, sports. Mm. It, is, it is amazing. Um, so, moving on a little bit, as we look through all the questions that we got, you know, coming to you, I think, unsurprisingly, there were a lot of questions from people who are curious about your personal life. You know, I think when you marry a Spice Girl, I guess that happens. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, but I think before we get to all of those, one of the more overarching questions that everyone had and everyone wants to know is what was it like to be at the wedding of the decade, the royal <laughs> wedding last April? I mean, what was it like to be there? I mean, we had to pinch ourselves when we got the invite, you know. Um, obviously, I've, I've become friends with with, with uh, Prince William and he's a, he's a great guy and obviously and Harry as well um, and I, I was brought up around the royal family to love the royal family my, my family my grandparents were big royalists and um, so we was brought up to love the royal family and I think when uh, when obviously Princess Di was around you know the, the love for her and for the royal family was was, was incredible um, and she was loved by millions and millions of people, not just in our country. And then obviously you, you, you watch the lives of, of William and Harry and you, you see everything about them and it's kind of like the Truman Show, you know, they're kind of <laughs> growing and growing and doing different things and being part of different charities and growing up from young boys to, to, young, to young men and to, to grown men. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it makes you proud to be English, to, to see that happen. You know, you watch their lives, you watch what they've been through, uh, and then you watch them grow into the people they are today. And, and they're very special people. And, you know, the, the Royal Wedding was a huge thing for our country to, <clears throat> to have a celebration like that. It was, it was very special and it, give, it, it gave, you know, our country a, a huge lift at the time. And uh, it's continued to do that. But, yeah, being at the royal wedding was incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was, it was stories and my, and your favorite parts. I mean, the, one of the best things about it for my wife, uh, she was eight months pregnant, and she was worried about where we was going to be sitting, as she needed to be as close to the restroom as possible. <laughs> um, and our seat was perfect uh, <laughs> because because we could see, obviously. Uh, William and uh, and Kate walk in, but then obviously Victoria could then she was like five steps away from the restroom, which was, <laughs> which was perfect. So it was uh, it was an amazing day, and um, you know we're proud to be a part of that as an Englishman. That's great. Well, speaking of Victoria being pregnant, Nur Ikisi has a question about Harper. The question is: Has Harper spoken her first word yet? What was it? And if not, are there any playful competitions between you and Victoria to see if she'll say mommy or daddy first? I mean, I think naturally the first word is going to be mama. Um, <laughs> and she's, she's close to it already. She's saying a few things. But, I, you know, I've obviously got three amazing boys. Um, and with boys, you know, I'm sure people that have children know or people that have been around children know, with boys, you can throw them up and they, they drop and they get up and they just run around. And, uh, and with boys, it's like that. But, uh, you know, it's obviously my first 
um, experience of having a little girl. Um, and, and still, I, I still, I'm changing a diaper and I'm thinking, I can't believe I've got a girl. <laughs> um, so, you know, everything about her is feminine, you know, the way she moves, the way she eats, the way she smiles, the way she looks, you know, everything about her is, is feminine. And I know it sounds obvious, but uh, it's an amazing thing having a little girl in the family now after uh, having three boys, but the, the best thing about it is she's got three older brothers. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, I have to say she and is, a dad. She is. A, I have to say she is an impeccable dresser, from what I've seen. So oh, her wardrobe is well. ridiculous already. So. <laughs> uh, <that's, laughs> I'm glad I got a two two year contract. <laughs> Very good. Uh, well, staying with that, I mean, obviously with three boys and now a girl and Victoria, you know, uh, Andres Rubio Barriga asks, how do you keep the balance between work and family? Obviously, you've got a hectic life around the world. What's that like? I mean, obviously, as a family, we're very busy. As a couple, we're very busy. Victoria's got a, a collection that is obviously doing unbelievably well. Um, but there's a lot of pressure that comes with that, obviously. Um, you know, and I'm working every day, I play uh, and train every day, so it's, it's, it's difficult, but like I said before, you know, our number one priority is our children and our family. Um, nothing else gets in the way of that. You know, when I'm away, Victoria's at home with the boys and, and Harper, when, when she's away, vice versa. So, you know, we're, uh, we're very hands-on parents. You know, I, I take the kids to school every day, pick them up every day. Um, we go taekwondo, we go soccer, we go, you know, there's so many things that uh, we do with the kids. And like I said, we're very hands-on parents. So, you know, it doesn't, our lives, our busy lives don't affect, you know, the children in any way. But but the children understand that we work very hard as well. So, um, you know, we've got, we've got a very good balance there. It's amazing to see, I mean, people as, as busy and hectic as you and Victoria can still take your kids to Taekwondo and be as hands-on. I think it's a... It's I mean, it sets the kid, kids up for life, I think, you know, the way you uh, are with them at a, a very young age. And, um, you know, we've got a very... We've got very special kids. That's great. Um, you earlier were talking about, obviously, the, the travel with, with the, the Galaxy, and you've lived in Italy, Spain, the UK. Uh, Carolina Ramos asks, what is your, or where is your favorite place in the world? Um, favorite place in the world? Um, I would have to say, I had, funnily enough, I love Paris as a city, <laughs> funnily enough. Mm. Um, and they was obviously one of the, the offers that yeah. I got yes, to, to go and play there. So, um, but I, I love Paris as a city. It's, it's very romantic. It's, it's, it's amazing culture, um, amazing food and wine. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I'm I'm very proud to be English. And, and London, there's not many better places in the world than London. Ooh, very good. I'm sure our London Googlers would be very happy to hear that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, so while we're on the the personal life topic stuff. I have to say I was, I promised some fellow co-workers I would ask you this question. Okay. Uh, please, you know, don't be embarrassed, but you know, I think a lot of people are, are interested what's up with the new underwear campaign. Oh, I knew this was You know, I mean, how big is it? I heard Super Bowl ad. I mean, yeah. how big is this thing going to get? <laughs> Another pun. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry, I need, I need some water. Um, obviously, I was part of Armani uh, campaign Previous, for, yeah. for a couple of years, and uh, that was a huge success. And then, you know, I, I was interested in doing something uh, along the lines with, uh, with, with my own range of underwear um, and bodywear. Um, <laughs> So, so I, I got together with a few people and, and part of my team and, um, and we designed and, and, and made everything and we had the product mm -hmm. um, all ready to go. And then H&M came in and they said, look, we can, we can make this better for you. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and they did, you know, they, they're taking it to 1800 stores, um, 40 different countries. Um, and it's something that I could have probably it had taken a few years, but you know, wouldn't have reached that level of, uh, you know, of, of distribution. So um, I'm very proud of it. Pictures are, pictures are good. Um, 
<laughs> which, I'm, which I'm happy about. The product looks great. <laughs> that's the most important, of yeah. course. <laughs> so that's exciting. You know, it's, uh, I'm launching it on uh, February 1st. Um, so it's going to be exciting. That's, that's in London. So Super Bowl ad? No? Can you say? Uh, there's a Super Bowl ad. Uh, which is uh, which is very exciting because you know the amount of people that watch the Super Bowl um, actually is going to see the advert. The, the worlds of football <laughs> which is, uh, colliding, which I just thought about. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, a couple more questions on the personal side. Imtiaz Ijaz asks, is wondering, are you considering starring in a film with Tom Cruise? <laughs> I'd love that? to star in a film with Tom Cruise. Who wouldn't? Um, I think, you know, people have asked me over the years, especially when I first moved to LA, they was like, oh, he's obviously going over to, you know, become an actor. Um, and I can't act, simple as that, you know, it's something that I've never done. I've been involved with, obviously, adverts and mm -hmm. different, um, you know, I was involved in uh, a couple of movies that were about soccer, but, um, you know, not major parts, not much talking involved, so that was, <laughs> that was great. Um, but yeah, who knows, something might happen in the future that someone comes up to me and says, you know, we want you to play this person and, uh, you know, and maybe it will happen, but uh, I don't think so. It's, it's not something, it's not an ambition of mine. Mm. You heard it here first, something might happen in the future. Maybe. Exactly, <laughs> you know, never say never. Never say never, because you guys are neighbors, right? You live Yeah, we near? live five minutes away. Five minutes away, so, you yeah. know, no, no banter around, you know, the recycling bin. I mean, there's, ban talk. there's banter, but not banter that I could say live on Google. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Very good, very good. Uh, one more question on this. Dina Ko asks, are you feeling nervous about your first Google Plus Hangout? Um, I'm not nervous, I'm excited. You know, being here today, I was, ex I was excited. You know, I woke up at six o'clock this morning and uh, give the kids breakfast just before I left. And I, I was excited about it. It's, it's something that I was uh, really looking forward to. So, not nervous. That's good, I think. Why should I be? Uh, no, I think it's a... Uh... <laughs> No, I think you're doing fine. I think, you know, okay. afterwards it'll be easy. I mean, it's just, you know, video conferencing with, you know, a bunch of your fans talking face to face. Yeah, it seems like something you really enjoy. It should be fun then. <laughs> so I think, uh, and for those of you that would like to watch that afterwards, David will be talking with some fans at 1030 uh, Pacific time right here on his Google Plus profile. Um, so I think now we're going to take some questions from Googlers around the world. I think we'll take a couple questions live from here in the audience and some kind of pre-selected questions. So any Googler that has a question, please begin lining up. Um, but we'll start with um, a question from Michael Compliger from London. And he wants to know, did you have a role model as a child and who was it? Um, I had a role model in, in football, um, in soccer, sorry, um, that was Brian Robson. He used to play for Manchester United. He was captain of Manchester United, he was captain of England. Um, he wore the number seven for Manchester United and England and everything that he did I wanted to, to do and become and, uh, and do exactly what he was like as a, as a player. And I was lucky because I wore number seven for Manchester United, wore number seven for England and captained uh, England and Manchester United. So um, I was very lucky to have done that. So he was you know, a role model that I looked up to. Very good. Why don't we take a live question over here? Hi, David. With everything that you've accomplished in kind of your career and your life in general, what would you say is the most meaningful accomplishment that you've had? Um, my family. My family is like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, it really is. You know, obviously I've, I've done a lot in my career and I've been able to be successful in different countries and different teams um, and different leagues, but um, and I'm very proud of that, but, you know, my proudest possession is my family. Thanks. Thank you. Can we take one on this side? Hi, David. Hey, morning. Um, I wanted if you could talk a bit about the London Olympics. Obviously, you were involved in the bid at the time. Yeah. Um, so are you hoping for a place in Team GB, and what would it mean to you to play <laughs> in the football Olympics? I mean, it's exciting, you know, for our country to host one of the biggest sporting events in the world. I think it's, uh, it's really exciting. And I think the buzz around England and around London, especially in, uh, around East London, where obviously I'm, I was brought up, um, it's exciting. Um, so yes, I would love to be part of Team GB. Uh, I've never been involved in the Olympics. And when 
uh, when you know the team came to me and said, you know, we want you to be involved in in the bid uh, to get the Olympics to to our country and to London. Um, I wasn't sceptical, but I was I was kind of nervous because you know I'm I'm not an athlete that has performed in the Olympics, so I kind of I was worried what I was going to bring to the table and what I was going to do to to help bring uh, it to our country. But uh, you know to be there and to be part of a successful bid uh, to bring it to to London, um, I was very proud of. It's one of the proudest moments that. Um, that, that, that I've been involved in, you know, especially to be sat there one side and then uh, the Paris side was sat the other side and, and all the media actually had moved to the, in front of the, the Paris team. Uh, so we all of a sudden got worried and then we expected Paris to be called out and then, um, then London came out and it was, uh, it was an exciting time. But it's going to be, gonna be a, a, an amazing games, you know, we're going to um, make it proud. That's great. Uh, we have a question from Anuj Ganda from London, and going back to the proudest moment, you know, in your footballing career so far, what would be the proudest moment? Um, the proudest moment in my footballing career, it, it's, it'd have to be uh, winning the treble for Manchester United the year, you know, 99. You know, it was a great year. Um, I got married, I had my first son, uh, and we won the treble. So it was, uh, it was a big year. Take a question on this side. Hey, David. Since moving to California, what's the funniest misunderstanding you or Victoria have had because of your accent? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure we've had as a funnier one than as our children had the other day. Um, we were sat there in the kitchen, well, when, in, the, in our first year. And, um, and Brooklyn, Brooklyn was writing on, on a piece of paper or drawing or doing some sketching. And he said, um, he said Daddy, I need, I need some rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I started looking around and I looked over and we had a couple of friends there that are from the US uh, and they, was, they, was, they looked in shock. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't understand it at the time, but um, he now calls them erasers anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. We'll take one on this side. Hi, David. Thank you for coming. I actually don't have an accent. I just really like yours. Um, <laughs> that's a, great, that's a, a great accent. accent. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming. Um, I'm wondering, after today's Hangout, do you have plans on how you'd like to use Hangouts in the future um, in terms of engaging with your fans all over the world? Um, well, hoping it goes well, then there'll definitely be more. But, uh, you know, I think this is the first time I've done it, so it's, uh, it's exciting, um, you know, to be able to hang out with fans that have supported me over the years and uh, throughout my career. It's, it's special, and obviously it gives them a chance to ask me questions that they've obviously never been able to. Um, so it's, uh, I'm excited, and hopefully there'll be more. Can I get a quick picture with you? Of course you can. <laughs> It's starting again. <laughs> you look handsome, by the way. Thank you. You look very lovely. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three, cheese. There you go. There you go. Thank you. No problem. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, David. <coughs> Back to the questions. Um, uh, no, uh, Dar Darminder Singh from the San Francisco office asks about, you know, throughout your, your career you've played against many teams, which particular team or set of players has left you in awe? And I think you talked about players, but, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit more about the team side that you've played against. Um, I think teams that I've played against that have left me in awe, I'd have to say the Barcelona team. Every time you come up against the Barcelona team, they play the game in such a great way. Um, but I think the, the, the one team that uh, I played against that, that uh, were amazing, it was where Ronaldo, the Brazilian player, uh, got a stand innovation from the Manchester United fans. Mm. Um, and that team, watching that team, uh, the way they played, for me, you know, it, it left you kind of you know, in awe of, of the players, uh, of the setup, of, of them as a club, uh, and the players that played there, you know, they had Zidane, Raul, Roberto Carlos, Ronaldo, 
Um, little, little did I know I'd be playing with them the season after. So, um, you know, that was exciting. But they're definitely a team that I was uh, in awe of. That's great. That's great. Want we take a question on this side? Your wife's been known to wear some pretty ridiculously tall shoes. I was wondering what your opinion is on your wife's footwear. <laughs> um, I think taller the better. Um, put it this way, I've not, I've not worn them. She's, <laughs> she said over the years that I wore her underwear um, for some unknown reason. Um, she said that live on TV, by the way, uh, which is not true. <laughs> Um, but uh, no, the shoes are great. I always, you know, I love a pair of high heels uh, on a on a lady. So, it's, uh, <laughs> so very good. I like them. Another high heel question on the side, or a different question? <laughs> hey, hey, David. That's I have a question. So, if you uh, if you want to pick a team to beat FC Barcelona, so which one do you want to choose? And do you already have some ideas to beat them? Um, I think to come up against a Barcelona team is, uh, is exciting. You know, you, you can never be worried about playing against a team. You know, as, as great as Barcelona are, as great as Real Madrid and Manchester United are, um, we're a team that's growing and we've got some very good young players in our team. Uh, and we've been able, like I said earlier about the interest in, in this league and, and our team uh, around the world, you know, we've had some of the biggest players and the biggest teams come over and want to play against us in, in pre-season games. So uh, we've come up against AC Milan, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Uh, I was going to say Manchester City, but... <laughs> yeah. But uh, we've come up against uh, some, some great teams and it's great to have that interest. So, uh, you know, you, sh you should never be worried about who you're going to play against. Very Thank good. you. We'll take one final question over here and then... Uh... Uh, one more, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for coming, David. Um, I know you've been around the league. Um, you've been around, you know, various different leagues. Where would you like to finish your soccer career at? Would you like to go back to Manchester United? Do you want to stay in America, or do you want to tackle some a league that you've never been to? I mean, you know, my next birthday in May, May I'll be 37. Um, Still really so young. So in, in, really in soccer years, it's uh, it's not so young. But, uh, but in, Beckham in, is, it's in really life, young. in life, it's young, uh, and I still feel young. So um, I'll continue to play the game as long as I can. Uh, I love it. Yeah, every single day, I, I enjoy going to training. Um, I enjoy playing in games. I enjoy being part of a team. Um, and you know, my contract's now for two years, so it'll take me up to almost 39, almost. <laughs> um, and then. We'll see, you know, I think people expected me either to, uh, you know, move away from the galaxy or, or retire um, at the end of this year. So um, I'm excited about these next couple of years, um, but, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. We do actually have a shirt for you. I'm not going to ask you to autograph it, okay. but, you know, we do have a <laughs> Google Beckham track jacket, oh, wow, which we great. would like to present to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We, def we definitely want to thank you for coming, and I think in addition to the track jacket, you know, all the Googlers here in the audience, please know that you will, there is a Google Plus David Beckham t-shirt for everyone here. It will be available um, in Benghazi in Building 43 from now until 11 a.m. I don't think David can sign all of them, so please be understanding around that, but please enjoy your free t-shirt. For those of you on the live stream and for those of you that have more questions, please feel free to join David at 10.30 at a hangout uh, on his Google Plus profile. Thank you very much, David. We really Thank appreciate you very much. it. Thank you. It was Thank fantastic. You. It was really appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you.